<laughs> money. Malaga's airport is where all the money goes. So just uh, well, I suppose we have to start off. We have to start off with Elon Musk. Don't we? we can't. We can't really. We can't really start a, a webinar about trading without without talking about the man um, at the moment. Now Elon Musk has now sort of taken control of of Twitter. So the board ratified the the, the takeover. And it's it's actually been a hostile takeover, so it hasn't been a, a takeover that most people have have said yes to. But again, the shareholders at the end of the day are are interested in money, and because he paid what was that about a 30, 34 percent over the odds, he now has a he now has a has a company at forty four billion. Now there's interest in the way he structured this. Okay, so he had to put up collateral for for the likes of this purchase. He had to put some money up. He had to he had to go and finance it. So he's financed it through J.P. Morgan, a few equity companies, so on and so forth. But can anyone tell me where the biggest stake for the for the takeover has come from? Can anyone tell me where most of the money has has come from? Well, Adam, that's pretty straightforward. Nope. <laughs> Eduardo so said selling Tesla. <clears throat> Eduardo, you're almost right. You're almost right. So he's used a big chunk of his Tesla shares as uh, as collateral for for this purchase. Now, with with using Tesla as uh, as collateral, what's the what's the negative side effect of this? What's the what's the negative of this? What can we see as but as a potential a potential massive red flag that if the price of tesla stocks drop all of a sudden there's a huge there's a huge hole to fill that the creditors will be looking for payments because the value of tesla stocks are not as as not as they once were now if the price of tesla stocks goes up then happy days, everyone is, everyone is laughing. He's laughing from uh, a credit rating. He's laughing from, from the point that he can sell uh, uh, just half the shares he once put up as collateral. And that would then, that would then potentially pay for the likes of, of, of the Twitter finance. Okay, so that's, so that's the thing with that. Now, the second thing then is, is that he is trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to actually if you look at and take him for face value, he's trying to use public uh, and freedom of speech. Okay, now so this comes across as a very what would you call it a vanity sort of project. This one at the minute, and obviously without without looking into it in great detail and and given a bit of time, we don't we don't massively know. But one of the big reasons uh, is that one he's potentially been um, banned off Twitter. That was the that was the next thing that was potentially common, but also he sees he sees Twitter as a, a microphone to the world. So obviously he's going to continue being vocal, which means then he has a much bigger stage now. People, there's going to be more people watching him, more people on his tweets, more people um, listening to what he's saying, which means then he actually now has a bigger microphone towards the world. So Felix has asked, do we sell Tesla shares? Well, the question I said to you, or, or the statement I made is that if Tesla shares drop, then that's going to be hugely negative for the likes of Twitter, which means then that he will probably go into default on Twitter, which means then that will have a negative effect. Creditors will then come for Tesla. But we're talking about the worst case scenario. So that is the worst case scenario. Now, what's the best case scenario? The best case scenario is that she takes hold of Twitter. Twitter continues to to grow, and then also, um, and also, um, also the likes of Tesla stocks should go.
Absolutely. He can say what he wants to increase the share value of the companies. Absolutely. So it's a, um, and, that, and that's it. And that's it. Well, Eduardo, we'll come to, we'll come to Dogecoin now very, very shortly as well. So what we're going to do is going to have a little look at, at what's happening with the likes of, with the likes of Twitter shares. Now, the first share that, 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 um, that Elon bought was the 31st of December. So that's when he made his first purchase of that particular that particular asset which was here and what happened is then that the stock decided to drop and started to started to come down and it it, it continually came down and now it started to to move sideways and now we can see here that it has now had a little pop to the upside and then this was where he actually made his play so in this particular scenario a lot of people sort of found out that he was making a play for twitter so on so forth so that's why that part. and then it was the big nine percent buying of this, this the share and that's where that particular jump now we're looking now at the market the market the pre-market we're up slightly on on yesterday's close so do we think do we think this will be good for twitter uh overall do we think elon coming in what he's looking to do is the two or three things that he said he was going to do he wants to get uh, identicate all all human beings okay that's what he wants to do he wants to get rid of bots and he wants to make the algorithm a little more user friendly for people so it, it have a sort of a natural algorithm rather than rather than twitter just posting content out to people so there are the three main things he's he's sort of he's sort of looking at do we think that is that is good for twitter or do we think that this will be a detriment <clears throat> so one of the things Jack Dawsey has come out and said is that uh, board members never, board members, good board members don't make a company good, but bad board members always make a company bad. Okay, so that's Jack Dawsey, who was the owner of, of Twitter. He's the one that came out and said that about Elon Musk's takeover. So he's not very happy about it. Okay, so that's that's the internal struggle going on there. So there will be a bit of toing and froing. There will be a little bit of 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 fighting in house going on. And it's now whether he can win those over and get them on side and get everyone pulling on the one track. So that for me is the biggest is the biggest thing here is that can he get the board members and everyone all fighting or singing from the same hymn sheet. If he can do that, then I can only see upside for this. But if he can't, then there's there's massive there's massive downside. The second thing he has to sort of do is make it more profitable. Okay, we can see the last two earnings were a miss, whereas previous previously we had earnings here. The four earnings before were good, hence why it, it sort of took off. Now we can see here that a high of eighty dollars is not a huge it's not a huge number for the likes of a social media platform that has been pretty much moving sideways. Let me have a look. It's been moving sideways pretty much since two thousand and fourteen. Hasn't really gone anywhere. So this is a company that since two thousand fourteen has pretty much been going sideways. So. If we can bring in any new ideas, if we can bring in new stuff, it can bring in and actually get the company actually consistently making profits, then we can see a huge jump to the upside here. Now, also what we will potentially have is we will have um, Elon Musk sort of brand lovers also jumping in on the likes of this. We will have people who have bought this and have never looked at Twitter before. Just to, just to do a, a, a sort of quick poll, there are there are 25 people here on the on the webinar. How many people bought Twitter? Just put a yes or a no. Uh, how many people? How many of you guys bought Twitter? Okay, but I mean just for just for Elon's Elon's because Elon bought it. Okay, so we have three people who have bought it because of because of Elon. Okay, now I bought it as well. I bought it literally because of a takeover. I know there's going to be an initial spike. And the question is, is do I hold on to it or do I jump out of it? Now, 
for me, I think there's a little more upside in this. So I'm going to hold on to this, hold on to this long term. So I want to say long term. I don't mean 10, 20, 50 years. This could be a year. This could be a two year project that I might that I might be looking to hold on for for a, a short space of time. So the idea would be is to hold on to this and, and, and go through, go through it that way. But the reason I bought it was because I was expecting a jump. And if we look at it now, there is a jump of about 10 percent. So it's now, do I jump out of it or do I hold on to it? So anyone who, who bought it, you are now about 10% up on your, on your investment. Should we hold on to that or should we jump out of it? What's your, what's your opinion? Okay, so the general consensus is that, it's, that it still holds. Okay, so then you have to sort of work out a plan. So if, if we're at, so we're at $50 here. If this gets to $100, if this gets to hundred dollars, does this turn into do we then jump out of it? We've made a hundred percent on it. Then do we jump out of it or do we continue to hold? Now, unfortunately, that that answer can't be can't be that can't be answered because we then need to know the amount of subscriptions that is coming in we need to know what revenue it is we need to know are they are they turning generating profit or is it they are burning money up to to build to build new products okay so that's so that's what we have to sort of look into so we can't if it gets to 100 dollars um some people will take out their initial investments but that's something that's that's a way of uh, of hedging your hedging your risk okay now we need to go over and have a look at tesla because tesla is one of the main main reasons for financing this so tesla it has a big chunk of debt hanging over its head now because of because of this now if we look at the, the pre-market tesla is slightly up on this so slightly up from where it was and we can see tesla shares have have really basically being sideways on this announcement. Again, we don't really know how this is going to affect Tesla unless the Tesla prices drop, okay? But if Tesla continues doing what it's doing, earnings are good, it's producing cars, it's producing new revenue, it's signing deals with the likes of Hertz, so once a fort, then we would expect this to continue growing. But again, a lot of people, a lot of people are looking at this and going, Tesla is overvalued. So you have an overvalued company that has now bought another company at a 30% higher than its value. Does that make sense? So that's that's the way we're looking at it. So we're not sure yet whether that's good or bad. But the idea would be is if we go into a massive bear market, if just say war hits the likes of hits the likes of uh, Europe and it spreads from Ukraine into the rest of Europe. Then all of a sudden, then we expect this and every other main digital company to drop like a stone. So it's not something it's not something that I would expect to withstand either of those Twitter or the likes of Tesla or most of the companies out there. OK, but if it doesn't, this could be a long term play for this to grow. Now, what? What upside Tesla has, again, who knows, with the electrical car vehicles um, being sort of outlaid across all the first world countries, uh, it will get to a point where all the cars in the first world country will be will be uh, electric. So we will get to that point. Uh, just a matter of are Tesla able to keep up with the likes of the Fords, Toyotas um, of the world. And that's that's. That's the question we have to ask ourselves. And then can the durability of their cars hold up against the rest of them? So someone mentioned it a little bit, a little bit earlier on. So the last one we sort of have to mention is Dogecoin. So if we have a look at Doge. So Dogecoin. If we look at this, Dogecoin has had a little bit of a jump. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So we can see Dogecoin has had a little bit of a jump since the last time we looked at it. 
So it had seemed to hit a floor down here. So I'm going to bring this down. Down to about there. So it seems to have hit a, a floor at about 0 points, 0 0.10. And now we're after jumping 50%. So from this low here, up 50%. But if you look at this, this is very similar to Twitter, isn't it? We look, uh, if we go back now and have a look at Twitter. So look, coming down, hit the floor and now pop back up. Coming down, hit the floor and now pop back up. So it's very similar to the likes of, to the likes of Twitter. Now we've had a, a, a nice jump of 50%. Yes, we're still 50% down on that. So there's still loads of room for us to go, for us to get break even or profitable on the likes of this world, for me anyway. Um, but the idea is, do we think that this will have a positive effect on the likes of Dogecoin long term? And the answer to that is, is probably not. Probably not. We need some sort of use cases on Dogecoin. Uh, it's one of those ones that could dissolve to zero or it could pop back up and we could we could get our money out of it so it's now just sit and hold and see and see what happens so yes there is a little bit of a there's a little bit of a jump on this but absolutely unless he starts uh, accepting it on on twitter uh, on the same as on tesla stuff like that there uh, i don't see any sort of i don't see sort of any jumps on the likes of this moving forward uh, and if it does, it's from some news or use cases that has has come out. But I don't I don't see anything majorly in the next in the next six months coming out to to drive this up. Now let's have a look at other investments other than other than Elon Musk. So something that I looked at the other day was UK one hundred. So I posted this in the Discord group. So the UK 100. So from Sunday's, well, we'll see. We'll see. Doge and Shiba will get integrated into Twitter somehow. Well, we'll see. Only time will tell. That's something that we'll we'll see what happens. But if we have a look at the likes of the UK 100. We can see here this purple line. We've had one, two, three, four, five touches off it, and it's now hit this level again. So this is something that I popped up into the group. We wanted it to come back into this level, and that's exactly what happened. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. So you can see the bar cells come down, and it's hit the purple line here nicely. Okay, so come down quite nicely and hit this here. We drop down to the four hour because on a daily chart. Is this is this a valid trade on the daily chart? Entry there, stop loss below it. So is that a valid trade on the daily chart right there? Okay, so we've had a lot of people have said yes, but for me, for me it's a no. Why is it a no? So for me, it is, it's a no because the bar is too big. For me, the, the bar is too big here. There's a huge bar. Okay, so we're risking 2.25. So bring that down to 2.25. So for us to hit profit, we're, we have to break this high here. So see this high here? We have to break that high before we hit profit. So that's not something that I'm that I'm happy to do on this. So the, the risk to reward here for me is not good enough on this particular trade. Now, what you could do is you could argue, well, Henry, it's an upper trend and you expect it to break this high. Absolutely. But what we've had is we've had one, two, three bounces, four in this sort of zone. We have a little zone there that, that is failing to break. Okay, well, what's going on in Ukraine? We have this, we have this zone that it's that it's failing to break. And would I be looking to trade past that? No, I may be looking to trade into it, par close my position, 
move my stop loss inside break even do something like that but yes there's a couple of there's a couple of things that i may do at that particular point but not uh not at this present moment so for me the trade is on the smaller time frame so i'm just going to move this out of the way a little bit so we can leave it there and then drop down to the four hour so we drop down to the four hour Look, there's the, there's the bounce. So there we had the big selling red bar and then we had the inside green bar, okay? So that for me is where this trade should have been placed. Right there on that bar, on this reversal. We're looking for the floor to be hit. It has hit the floor. It has broken through, but then instantly price has come back through it. So for me, as a someone who's looking to place this trade, we should be entering there So we should be entering there. Slightly down a little bit. So entering there and stop loss about there. So that's where we should be entering. See that green bar? The low is a little bit lower than the red one. And then the entry is a little bit lower than the, than the top of the red one. So that should have been the entry on this bar. And then the take profit can be in the same place inside just inside these highs so inside those highs there so we can have the, the take profit there which means then your risk of 1.17 and the take profit is just under three percent so which means that it'd be uh, under three percent which means that it'd be a two two and a half to one for us to for us at the moment so which means now at the minute we're in a little bit of profit now if we look at this on the likes of of eToro, which a lot of you guys are trading. So if we look at this at the UK 100, we can see that the price action bar on the UK 100 is very different to the to the likes of um, the likes of um, TradingView. So let's have a, a quick look. We're pulling that up there now, and we're going down to the four hour. So click on this, down onto the four hour. And look, we have a little low test bar there. Look, we have a nice little low test bar on the smaller time frame. If we zoom in on that there, it actually gave us a better entry point. So price action is slightly different. It gives us a nice little better bar and it actually gives us a better entry point. So channel, the entries there, and a stop loss there, which means at this particular point, we would be a one-to-one -one up already on this particular trade if you took it on eToro looking at that price action bar. So we risk there 0.7. At this present moment, you would 0.9. So three sevens are 21. So take profit is there on eToro, 7536. But which is there it's only halfway up so it's only halfway up this movement did did anyone take that did anyone take that trade is that a, is that a trade that anyone took you were on holiday in turkey so you didn't take it fair enough um also i stuck you on mute there because there was a a noisy passenger walking past fortunately so um bear with me so that was a trade there that we were looking at uh, and something that was posted in the group. Now, if I also um, go over here and we look at silver, look at the green list, pull up silver. So if we look at silver also had a potential a potential trade on it so we saw this little sort of a little bounce let me see where that's coming from bear with me pop that up onto the daily chart
lower is a fraction. So that's where that's coming. One, two, three, four. Okay, so five. Now we can see here that we are massively overextended here on silver. Okay, so we're massively overextended on silver. So we've had we've had just selling bar, selling bar, selling bar, selling bar, and now we've had this inside bar. Okay. Now at this particular point, should we be selling or are we looking at this as a reversal to the upside? Should we be looking at this as a reversal to the upside? Or do we think this will continue going down? What's the consensus on this particular one here? So I expect reversal, reversal, reversal. Okay, well, I expect this to continue. If the reversal was going to happen, in my opinion, see this inside bar, it would have already happened. Okay, that's in my opinion. It would have already happened. So what we also have here then, we also have this going on. So we have one cycle, two, three, and we've had that pull back there. Now again, is this the, is this the highest probability trade in the world? Absolutely not. Stay with me, I'm gonna cough. Excuse me. Is this the highest probability trade in the world? Absolutely not. We've had one, two, three, four touches here. We have this little small high test bar. So the entry is below that level and a stop loss slightly behind above it. So there. So is that, was that trade there valid? Was that something that we should be looking into? Or are you looking at this level here and going, oh, Henry, that, that level is too strong. I need to have my, my take profit inside there, which wouldn't be a one-to-one. -one. Or do you go, Henry, that's a really soft level. I expected to break that and 3.4 would be my take profit on a three to one more. And I'll pop up to the, to the daily chart so you can actually have a quick look at it as well on the daily chart. So there we are on the daily chart. Do we expect that to continue going? Is that trade valid at that particular point? Now, is this the highest probability trade in the world? Not at all. Absolutely not. Okay. So it's not the highest probability trade in the world. But is it a valid trade? Yes, it is. There are a couple of things that would stop me potentially taking this. And one would be that it's overextended on a daily chart. Two, that we have a soft level. Now remember, that's only a soft level. So is it a perfect trade? No. Is it a valid trade? Yes. Now the idea would be is if this is your first trade on this particular asset, I would not take it. But if you've taken one, two, or even three trades already on this, and you're playing with profit already from the market, then yes, this is a valid trade. Or if this is your first trade, I probably could be taking it and then trailing my stop loss underneath. So there's a couple of different ways of managing this trade if it, if it comes to, if it comes into that. Okay, so which means now, if you're trailing your stop loss, your stop would now be here, which means then that you are 
you are probably only maximum, instead of losing 100 quid, you can lose 60 quid. Okay, so that's the idea of this at the moment. Let's have a, a quick look at when we're here. Let's have a quick look at gold. So we drop up to the daily chart and let's have a quick look. We have seen the very same drop on gold as we've had on silver. And the question, the question for ourselves is, are we are we at a, a level where we expect this to turn? And looking at this, I expect not. I'd expect it to come back to this other level here, the 1874 level. So if it comes back to this level here, that's where I'd be looking to potentially buy or sell. Now we do have two soft touches here on this. We have a touch there, touch there. But for me, this has still more room to the downside here. And if we want, we can then drop down to the smaller time frame and have a quick look on the four hour. So if we now look at the four hour. We've had one touch, two touches, three touches, and we've now had this pullback. We've now had this pullback here. We have the phase one, phase two, phase one, phase two coming back down. So we took the trade on silver, but there's also, just imagine this bar is finished because this bar is not finished. We'll just assume that this bar is finished right now. Okay, we'll just make that assumption. This bar is finished, short. Is that trade valid there? So we're risking 0.9, and then before we get to this level, it'll be 1.3. So 1.1 1, 1 to 1 on that particular trade. Now, why I've left a little bit on the top of it here is because I have a level that's a little bit higher, but that could be a little zone but I've left my stop loss above, which means then I could get triggered in, come back to this level and then turn back down to the downside. So that's, that's a trade there that's potentially setting up. But if you're already in silver, you do not take gold. If you're already in silver, do not take gold. They, they're, they're, they're identical trades, okay? They're identical trades, so do not, do not take the other one so one or the other don't be taking both of them so is this a valid trade here at the moment and before some people will answer they want to have a quick look at the dixie and we can see on the four hour the the dollar index is flying to the upside so we can you can see here that dollar is much stronger against euro and the other currencies. Now, just, just to reiterate, guys, is remember that the DXY is 60% weighted against euro, and then it's weighted against the other ones um, at a pro rata, okay? So it's 60% dated against the euro. So you can now understand why the likes of gold and silver are going in the opposite direction because the Dixie is quite strong, dollar index is quite strong, which means then that gold and silver are quite weak. If we have a look at, say, the dollar in general. We can see that there was a, a massive drop on this. It was a nice little trade on the four hour if you wanted to short that. Would have been a nice little, a nice little winner, continue dropping. The same with Euro USD. We wanted a pullback here on the smaller time frame. Doesn't look like we got it. Let me drop down and have a quick look. And we didn't get the pullback that we wanted. We wanted to come back and hit its head here 
it had one two bar pullback and then continue dropping. So if we're looking at this, dollar seems to be the strongest currency across the board at the minute. We had a breakout here. Anyone that took this trade went on to a winner. We had a breakout here, stop plus above it, entry blow here, and then it just broke out to the downside. But we're looking for a pullback, hasn't happened. USD CHF, we wanted to pull back to here. Again, hasn't happened. NZD USD come back nicely. So this one was probably a better trade than it was a better trade than the likes of um, than the likes of the Aussie. We dropped down to the smaller time frame here, four hour. Had a really nice inside bar here. Come back, hit its head, and then dropped like a stone. Did anyone did anyone take this one here? So well done, Massey. Well done, good trade. USD JPY drop down here to the daily chart or back up to the daily chart. So we've actually had a little bit of JPY strength on this over the last couple of days. So we talked about that on the webinar, potentially seeing a little bit of JPY strength. Now, I've no idea whether this is going to be sort of uh, a new call or whether this is just a, a phase two and then continue or whether JPY is now going to get stronger across the board. So this is something that we we'll need to keep an eye on over the next week and a half to two weeks, because if we expect JPY to get stronger across the board, we wouldn't be trading it against US dollar. We'll be trading against Aussie. We'll be trading against Kiwi. We'll be trading potentially against GBP. USD CAD. Again, we had this double bottom and completely changed direction here uh, for USD CAD. And we don't see any, any sort of stopping on this till it sort of hits that ceiling up here. So this for me continue to dare before we get some sort of before we get some sort of uh, move on direction or anything like that. Can you have a look at Euro GDP, please? Um, <clears throat> Euro GDP for me has to come back up to this level. This level is the weekly one. So for me. That there is the, the trade. That's where I expect it to come back to. We do have sort of a softer level through here. But again, it's it probably wouldn't be the area I'd be looking to trade off of. I'd be looking to trade more off this weekly level than I would on that daily. Let's go up and have a quick look at the weekly. But we are getting huge swings on this. This is not a, a, an easy currency to be to be sort of trading at the minute, but we do have this sort of channel that it's bouncing between. It eventually will break out of this channel, but again, it's it's we're, this is what we're seeing at the minute. For me, back up and hit this and hit this uh, trend line here, and then we're sort of in that area. But if it does come back to this trend, this horizontal, we're not too far away. We're not too far away from it being in the correct area, are we? Let's have a quick look at some crypto. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. Move that out of the way. And zoom out a fraction. So we've had, since our last webinar, has pretty much moved nowhere. We have this sort of sideways momentum. It's not going anywhere. It is literally, it's literally just moving sort of sideways. Yes, it has sort of hit this floor of this of this triple bottom here. But at the end of the day, it's not, it's not really going anywhere. It's not something that we're looking to trade. It is one of these ones that we're just now leaving alone and letting it letting it sort itself out. Do we think that this is in around between here and the 30,000 area, do we think this is a, a good place to be buying? 
Bitcoin, or do we think it'll go back down in around the 20,000 area? Which of the two are we are we thinking that between between 30 and 39 and 30, or are we expecting it to go down below 30 to 21? Which of the two? So most people are expecting it to bounce between the 39 to 30K. So expecting it to bounce between here. So if, if you're expecting it sort of to bounce in between here, have you, when it gets down around the 31,000 level, have you, have you bought some more? Is this, have you dollar cost averaged in at the sort of key levels that you're looking to jump in on it? If you don't expect it to get to the uh, uh, below 30K, so in around between 30 to say 35K, isn't that an area where we should be sort of buying it? That's the case, if that's your if that's your understanding. Now, and I don't mean get thousands of pounds, but you know, I mean your 50 quids or 100 quid or 200 quid a month. So when it's sitting here that we're sort of dollar cost averaging in at a price that we think is is pretty decent. So that's the that's the idea. That's the that's the thinking behind it. So we're jumping in on places where we expect the markets to continue continue going to the upside, where we think is a floor. So in around this thirty k level, that's where it seems to be a floor. It's it stopped there once, stopped twice. It didn't quite hit it here a third time. So if it comes back down around here, this seems to be the area. I would buy more at the 30 to 32 K mark. Absolutely, I have an order here again at the 30,500. So I have another order again at this particular one uh, to potentially be to be jumping back in in the market. Okay, so I see a little bit of value there. I see a little bit of uh, place where we can actually jump in and and get some more money at that particular point as well. So Matic, so Matic again is back at this floor. Oh, got back where it was. Um, so Matic is back at this floor. We have a little level there that is, that seems to be holding, but unless unless something comes out here again on the likes of Matic, I would expect it to break this floor. I can't, I can't see it staying held at this particular point. Uh, so I would expect it to continue. I would expect it to continue coming down, uh, in my opinion. ADA. Same scenario. ADA has now sort of dropped down to the, the lower region here. We have a really small level at this one. And it looks like it's coming back down to that particular point. Do I expect it to stop there? Probably not. It's broken its level now. So if it pops and hits that, that its head here, I'd expect it to come back down again. Um, but would I expect that level there to be held? Not really. It's now just a matter of whenever some good news comes out on it, it will then sort of take off again. We sort of need crypto to to sort of take off again for before this sort of for this to pop back up to the upside. I know a lot of you guys have Solana. Same again, it seems to be finding new levels to the downside. And for me, the big one is down here, back down at this level here, the 18.10. So that for me is the area where I would probably expect that to come back down. So unless, unless something changes in the crypto space here, I expect all these to slowly come down, people pulling out of it, people shorting it. I don't see, I don't see massive areas. Uh, do I expect it to bounce there? It'll probably bounce again, but the more times it hits this level, the more pressure to the downside there is on it. 
So again, Tron is back in this sort of in this sort of level needed for it to drop down to the 0 0.048 level before we're looking to for we're looking to trade it. So back to back to that area there before I would before I'd be looking to potentially invest or jump in on this. Similarly here, we do have we do have a very soft level here again. I'm gonna pull this one over. Soft level on this again. About there. But for me, this is the this is the mark that it has to get down before there's any sort of buying power again to the upside is the 0 0.7372 level. Okay, everyone, it's been an absolute pleasure. Be oh, before you guys go, I'm going to give you a link for next week's webinar. So just bear with me for a second here, because this webinar now has run out. So webinars, bear with me for a second. So this is next week's webinar. Here is the link for it. And this is a recurring one. So this will recur for 50 times again. So it's here. So just make sure you register with that link there. So that's the that's next week's that's next week's webinar. It's in the it's in the chat here. So just make sure everyone clicks on it, you save it, you do whatever you want. Uh, because that will be that will be the that will be the that will be the link we follow for the next 50 webinars. Okay, so it's there. It'll also be in my free Discord chat room. I know the free Discord chat room, you can't say anything, but my webinar links are always put up there every single every single time. So if you go here to the to the chat, look at the announcement, there's the webinar link every single time. It's always there for you guys. And the recording is also there. So even if you're not in the paid one, in the free one, you will always get the webinars and the webinar link. Okay, everyone? It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. And hopefully you have a safe flight as well. Thank you very much, everyone. And I hope you have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.